you've spoken a couple of times now about um about your cancer so uh can you just tell us a little bit more about that story like what happened i think it was you were out in australia wasn't it you were doing a race around the rottenness when you when you kind of got diagnosed or, or had the pain initially yeah, I, had, I mean, I had unbelievable pain, and that's the thing with sports when they can endure a lot more pain than most people. So I had this terrible pain, and I thought, shit, and, and nothing would work. Funny enough, that in, on the Emirates flight back, the, this is a good uh, method of, of curing pain without pills, because I hate taking pills anyway, and none of them worked. She put a, a hot water bottle uh, in a two liter, plastic two liter, boiling hot water, and put those socks over, and then I just put it on my back, and it just eased the pain. In fact, if you ever have, and I spoke to a pain guy who said that's the best way is to have high intensity heat on your pain and it will disappear. So it disappeared. So when I came back to Portugal, I think about the 23rd of November, um, I went for another MRI because they did the MRI and that's what made this wrong. And, and they did the low part of the back. So then when they did higher up, they found the tumor pushing on my spine. And that's how they said, and they all, the reason why they gave you six months, they said, this is a secondary secondary cancer so we got to find the primary cancer and then came back to Crudisca just up the road yeah where Chris Barnard had his first heart transplant and they said no no and and just before I was getting operated on they said okay we found what you got you got multiple myeloma bone marrow cancer and it's an incurable disease but I still didn't know and I never was and I was still positive saying okay when can I start paddling but it was a six-month journey through COVID of having chemo every day. And I was very different to most people in chemo. They all said, you're going to get sick and you're going to be bad and this and that. And I said, okay, well, the only way I'm going to get sick if I've got food in my stomach. So I used to first three or four days before the chemo, have the chemo, have no effect, have my meal after the chemo and carry on training, doing everything as normal. Had the stem cell harvest, had the bone marrow transplant. And after that, I was, I was three weeks in hospital. After that, I could only walk 200 meters. And then because, and then I just slowly again grown. I mean, so I learned just like I went from golf to paddling to Olympics, the same thing. I couldn't play golf, couldn't paddle, so I walked. So you've got to just change your 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 life. So I just walked and walked and walked, and eventually was doing 15, 16 kilometers of walk, walking, and then eventually got back into golf and paddling. But along the way, because I had so much chemo, then I started getting skin cancer. And you can see that they chopped a bit of my ear, and I got a big hole in my head. Those things just go with the territory. Again, most people say, oh, you've got another cancer, and they would get upset. At no stage did they get upset. I said, okay, we've just got to fight, and we've got to be careful. So cancer teaches that you, you've got to live every day, but don't be stupid about it and cut out carbs and do that. I've done all that. And it's interesting that I've, I had permanent, I've always done permanent chemo. So I have chemo every three months. 